We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. The fourth man to set foot on the moon. Please give a stellar welcome to Captain Alan Bean. Hello, fellow earthlings. <laughs> Hello, fellow human beings. It's nice to be with you in paradise. And I don't mean Naples, Florida. I mean on this beautiful planet that we're lucky enough to live our lives on. Planet Earth, blue and white, so beautiful from space, hanging out there in the black void. The only thing that's really as beautiful as the Earth from space is nothing else. This is it. I think the Bible has it a little bit wrong. I don't think Adam and Eve were tossed out of the Garden of Eden. I think we're fortunate enough to be living in there. It's wonderful to be here today. Uh, first, I'd like to say that uh, congratulations. Uh, I was had dinner with Cy last night and uh, with Mel Steele also and. Uh, we had a chance to talk. I had a chance to find out what it took to be uh, part of the President's Club, the President's Organization. I know it's not easy, so uh, uh, I, um, I'm glad to be here and talking with you. I'm humble somewhat. I had a chance to read uh, some of the things you're going to be saying at the award ceremony about each of the uh, individuals that got the award, and uh, it's pretty amazing. So uh, even though I've got some stories to tell today, I realize that each of you got stories to tell, too, that are good and, uh, and interesting and uh, uplifting. And uh, I enjoyed reading them. And I, I was, as I say, I was humbled and really stunned by the accomplishments that, uh, that many of you in the uh, room have uh, been able to do. So I'm glad to be here, glad to be, just glad to be anywhere on earth. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's good. It's, this is a good place. But I'll... I'll, uh, I'll say more about it later. I was, I was invited to be here mostly because uh, of my uh, experiences in the space program. I was an astronaut for 18 years, and I enjoyed all of it. I enjoyed every minute of it. Most of it was hard work. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the movie Apollo 13, which is representative of what happens in flight, you might say, the action, the excitement, and the awe. But most of... Uh, being an astronaut is the sort of things that you're doing every day in, in meetings, trying to solve problems, trying to work together with other people, trying to be the best we can be so that the group we're working with will be the best it can be. All those things that you're wrestling with every day are the same things that astronauts wrestle with every day. And then every once in a while, I say I was there 18 years, every once in a while, twice, I got to go out and fly in space. And so that's why I'm here today. I'm going to try to do do two things. First, I'm going to take you on both of my space missions. Went to the moon on Apollo 12 in 1969. It was a 10-day mission. And then uh, in 1973, I spent two months or 59 days up in the Skylab space station, 260 miles above the Earth. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And the second thing, I, well, before I talk about the second thing, let me say this. I wish that evolution, human evolution, had taken a slight turn from the way it did. I wish that uh, above each of our heads was sort of a bubble like uh, there is 
on cartoon characters, you know. And in this bubble, on everybody, you could look at them, and uh, right above, my name is. Well, you wouldn't, they were, or you wouldn't forget their name. You'd just look there. You wouldn't have to wear name tags. And then under is, my dream for my life is this. And then he would say it. My goal for the next year is this. And most important from my point of view underneath there would say, I think I could use some help in achieving my dreams and goal in this area and this area. And what I could do, like last night when I was around the group, I could look around and see what you were thinking. I could look right now and say, you know, I think this is something I could help with. Maybe I can't do much about that. I don't know anything about it. All I know is space and art, but I can't, can't help them, but I could, I could help her maybe. Couldn't help him that much. Something like that. So it's not that. Evolution didn't take that, didn't take that turn. In fact, I've always wished that evolution gave us tails like puppy dogs. My wife and I have eight lots of opsas, and one of the nicest things about them is when you look at them and talk with them, you can see how they feel. They can see, they, they little tails are the clue. And you look, and if we all humans had that, it would be the most wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, think how it'd be in a dating situation when you were in high school. <laughs> Anyway, so all I can do is try to share with you then some of the lessons that I learned along the way, the ones that have made a big difference in my life. And uh, hopefully uh, they will maybe sing. Them. I, they're not going to be new to you. Everything I'll say from that point of view, I'd heard before too. It's just that I wasn't using it. I didn't put it in the context of my life in the real world. It was almost like I'd read it in a book or hear it somewhere but my life didn't have anything to do with that rule, and so I, I wasn't doing it. And finally, I began to learn it and incorporate it, and it made a big difference. So let's talk about going to the moon, though. I know that's the most uh, important thing we can do. Every trip has got to start somewhere, and for me, it started, it started when I was a youngster, as far back as I can remember. Uh, I wanted to fly airplanes. And uh, I don't know why. I just liked the way they looked. I liked the way they moved through the sky. I liked the way they sounded. My dad would take me out to the airport on Sunday, and I'd look at them come in and watch the propellers turn. I liked the way they smelled. I liked everything about them. I think we're all trapped in being who we are, what we like and what we don't like. And one of the challenges we have in our life is finding out how to take the things we like and make a life out of them. How can we take our special ways and likes and dislikes and make something that's worthwhile in this world. And no one can do it for us. We have to do it ourselves because we're the only one that knows all these things. And it takes a lot of thought and activity. So that's, that's a lifelong project, by the way. But here I am. You know, they say you marry someone that sort of looks like you. I think maybe that's true from looking at a lot of couples over the years. But maybe even in high school you're attracted to people that look like you. Look at the ears on these four guys. <laughs> Now, I've got to say, I just finished a year and a half of flight training, and I, I was a good pilot, but I wasn't the best pilot. They had an award every week in flight training called Student of the Week. And so if you got the best gra grades in ground school and you got the best grades in flying, then you won Award of the Week. I tried every week to win it. I never, ever won it. I could fly airplanes, but I wasn't the best. I was just another student trying to be great. The closest I ever got is one time my roommate, who didn't care that much about it, but was a better natural aviator, he happened to mention about three days after he won it that he won it because he knew it was going to kind of break my heart. I was happy for him and jealous of him because he knew how much I wanted, but I never did. And I'm going to say more about that later because when I got down to NASA, I found out that everybody there, they weren't the... We weren't the cream of the crop in the way of aviators. We weren't the smartest people around. We weren't the, heavy, the healthiest people around. But we did have some qualities in common that served us in good stead even more than that. And, uh, but then it was disappointing. Now I realize it did affect me in certain other ways. It, it turned out to be beneficial.